we need a precision medicine approach. You are different from me. I'm different from my friend. We're all, yes, we're women, but that doesn't mean that what works for you would work for me. We really need to understand female physiology and start thinking about the individual in front of us. My work is focused on the raw biological differences between the female brain and the male brain because these differences are real and they're very important for our, for our health overall. So for context, women are twice as likely as men to be diagnosed with an anxiety disorder and depression, three times more likely to develop an autoimmune disorder, including those that attack the brain, like multiple sclerosis. We're four times more likely to really suffer from headaches and migraines, as any woman can say, right? <laughs> Any woman can say that, but we're also more likely to develop meningiomas, which are the most common forms of brain tumors, and we're far more likely to die of a stroke. And on top of all this, women are more likely than men to be diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. So historically, I do like history, medical professionals believed that women were essentially smaller men with different reproductive organs those parts of the body that would fit under a bikini, which I refer to as bikini medicine. Now, bikini medicine is saying that from a medical perspective, what makes a woman a woman is a reproductive system, right? And given this framework, the very concept of women's health is problematic because research and care are confined to our reproductive organs. The reason being that from a neurological perspective, a big difference between the genders is that their brains age differently. And menopause plays a key role here for women. Now, we, we tend to think about our brains as being isolated from the rest of the body. But in reality, our brains are in constant interaction with the rest of us in the interactions between the brain and the reproductive system are really crucial for brain aging in women. And these interactions are mediated by our hormones. What's really important here, what's really important for our brain health is that these hormones differ in their lifespan, in their trajectory, and in their longevity. Men's testosterone doesn't really run out until late in life, which is a slow, and fairly gradual, almost linear process. But women's estrogens, on the other hand, start fading in midlife during menopause, which is anything but gentle or gradual. Estradiol regulates immunity, giving resilience and strength to the brain. It, supports, it really supports neuroplasticity, which is like it supports the growth of new synapses and new neurons and connections between different parts of the brain. And also it's key for energy production in the brain. So at the cellular level, estrogen literally pushes neurons to burn more glucose to make more energy, which means that when estrogen is high, your brain energy is high. But when estrogen declines during menopause, and neurons slow down and start aging faster. And some studies have shown that this process can in turn promote the formation of amyloid beta plaques or Alzheimer's plaques, which are a hallmark of Alzheimer's disease. We think of menopause and middle age and Alzheimer's disease as old age. But in reality, many studies, including a ton of my own work, have really shown that Alzheimer's disease starts with negative changes in the brain years, if not decades, prior to clinical symptoms. And our studies have shown that for women, this process starts around menopause, which really changes and really shifts the timeline dramatically to midlife, to middle age. And we need to start looking for those changes and talk about Alzheimer's prevention, not only in our 70s and 80s and and later than that, but also in our 40s and 50s. I think this is very empowering information if we think about that way. It's a little scary, but it's also really important to have. The timeline is really important because 
Most women go through menopause in their early 50s. I strongly believe that the sooner we start looking at gender and reproductive health as being important for our brains, the sooner we'll come up with solutions that actually work, not just for Alzheimer's disease, but for women's brain health as a whole.